And welcome into the ballpark. Happy to have you with us. The show has an AL East matchup. It's the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the New York Yankees. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. Just about set to go. And on the mound in this one, Garrett Cole. Comes into this start sporting a lifetime ERA just over three. He's been pretty great for most of his big league career. Can't wait to watch him in this one. Here at New Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, stepping in the Leading long ball tonight, threat, Toronto, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. The wind of the pitch. And that one is lifted in the air. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. One down. Batting second. Let's the take a look at the lineup for the Blue Jays. They're facing a guy today who is a strike thrower. Doesn't issue a lot of walks, so they're going to have to work hard to generate base runners. And when you've got a strike thrower like this guy on the mound, you can't be overly patient as a hitter because the umpire is generally going to give him the benefit of the doubt. So you got to go up there, understand what's in his repertoire, be aggressive in what you can handle. And you get three swings, why not take all three of them? With his control and command, he's going to be in the strike zone. No score just getting started top of the first. And the next pitch is way outside. I love that Garrett Cole is sort of a throwback guy out there on the mound. Sort of that classic power pitcher. He's going to attack with that fastball, move it all around the edges of the zone. And when he has to, fill up the strike zone with confidence that hitters can't touch it. Next offering is in for a strike. The pitch. Backed off the plate that time. Cole, of course, the first overall pick by the Pirates in the 2011 draft out of UCLA and really blossomed as he moved from Pittsburgh to Houston in 2018. the line if it's fair it's gone and that is out of here Bo Bichette blasts one out his second of the year just like that they move in front it's one nothing Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate, but he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch, absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. One down. Now it's Matt Chapman and the pitch. Third, the third baseman, Matt. In there for a strike at the bottom of the zone. He's one of the two pitchers to strike out 14 batters in three consecutive games. Pedro Martinez was the other to do it, but Garrett Cole, again, just a dominant pitcher that wants to finish what he starts. Next offering is in for a strike. I mean, that's perfect location right on the black. I mean, over and over again, this guy demonstrates the ability to hit those spots. They're so tough to do anything with as a hitter. Well, just excellent location on that inside fastball. Really that locked him up. And as a hitter, it's not typically what you're looking for. You're trying to protect away and then in. So you can be a little bit tardy with two strikes. Hard to tell if he was fooled or if he thought it would be called a ball. But either way, that's a really nice pitch. Here's Guriel in there, and it's 0-1. Comes up empty on the swing, 0-2 now. Quickly in an 0-2 count, you've got to figure out a way to shorten your path to the baseball. Put it in play somewhere, then you got a chance. And down on strikes goes Guriel, and that'll do it. Jays open it up with a solo homer. It's now 1-0.
Today's starting pitcher, Kevin Gossman. He's had his ups and downs in his career as his ERA is just over four, but this is a guy that's not afraid. He's going to take the ball. He's going to go out there and give it his best. Santiago Espinal comes on defensively now as he takes over as the new second baseman. Now playing second base. Bottom of the first. And now big number 99, Aaron Judge. Singing, you can't ask for anything more. This guy checks all the boxes offensively. He is the ultimate professional, and it doesn't just start at game time. It starts in the afternoon the way he prepares and gets ready for the ball game. I tell you what, his teammates feed off of the leadership that he shows on and off the field. The pitch. And that one just misses a ball and no strikes. Next pitch is downstairs. For Judge, he's really developed into more than just a power hitter. He covers the plate well, shows impressive awareness of the strike zone to boot. That's critical. Very important. If you want to be one of the best to ever play, it can't be all about hitting home runs. You have to have plank discipline as well. And here it comes. And he pulls up on it, and that's a hit. Man, Siggy, he hit that, that ball second. right on the sweet no spot. Here. According to StatCast, the exit below 110 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah, Boog, I mean, that right there is an absolute missile. And he just put a great swing on it, squared it up perfectly. Those are the ones that feel really good. And now, here's the other half of the Twin Towers. John Carlos Stanton, big time power. First pitch, and he just misses. And the 1 0. Nope. And there's a the ball. Foul ball there. And that is ball four, and the Yankees are in business. Pretty easy walk right there. Last pitch wasn't even much to think about. That is good. Now it's Josh That's Donaldson's good. turn to hit. Josh Donaldson. Gosman back to work. There's a strike. First and second here, no outs. Next one misses, and that's ball one. One one. And strike two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And one out now. Well, one of the things that hitters will do is they'll look for that red dot on that the baseball as he's coming in the to let him know 
what the pitch is. And if they see the red dot, it's typically a slider. But when a guy's got a really tight one with high spin rates, very difficult to determine. And that's probably why we saw a swing and miss right there. Just a nasty pitch. Up to the plate steps D.J. LeMay here. The 1 0. Tap of the zone, and it's called a strike. He's looking for a ground ball to get a double play and out of this jam. Here's a 1 1. And that one fouled off. Next pitch has popped up. Guerrero brings it in two away now. As we take a look now at the New York Yankees lineup. Already trailing by a run in this one. They'll be looking to get on the scoreboard early on as well. Well, it's just the one run, so not too big a hill to climb. But, yeah, if they can answer back in this inning or at least in the next couple, that'll maybe settle everyone into this ball game, and that includes their own starter on the mound. And here is Anthony Rizzo. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Owen oh, two as he waves at that one. He finds himself in a tough situation early. Just got to try to simplify it. Take a knock the other way if you can. And a pitch. Tapped at the plate, but it's a foul ball. Very dominant with that fastball inside. Hitter's going to be conscious of that. Now you have the outer half of the plate to work with out there on the mound. On the ground. Espinal picks it up to second. There's Bichette. Third out, and that ends the frame. Yanks strand a pair. Still behind by a count of one to nothing. Back now in the Bronx, and now the right fielder, Teoscar Hernandez. The right fielder, Teoscar Hernandez. The pitch. And a good fastball, strike one. Cold night tonight, Boog, and that's a pretty firm fastball right there. I tell you what, memories of getting jammed, they creep it into my mind right now. And the righty deals. He swings and fouls one off. Here's the 0-2. And down on strikes. And that's the first out. And the batter is George Springer. The center fielder, number four. George. The right hander back to work. And that one fouled off. Oh, one down. Ball one there. Carl Dixon doing the umpiring behind the plate. And Boog, I'm not sure if it's because he sort of sets up higher than most, but one thing to be aware of with Dixon is the high strike. Not usually a big deal because most guys are swinging at pitches up there, but we may see some surprise looks from hitters from time to time because that's just so unusual. Swing and a miss. One and two. What about some no-nos? Like, you can't call the umpire blue the way you do in Little League. Oh, this one high and deep. Way back there. And it's gone. George Springer takes it deep. And they add a run. It's 2-0.
That slider on the outside part of the plate is typically hit the other way, but to be able to get to it, pull the baseball, and get it up in the air for a home run, I'm just really impressed. Danny Jansen to hit here. Number nine. Danny that one's in there, 0 and 1. Jansen. The 0 1. This one's high and deep, way back there, on its way, gone. Danny Jansen hits one out. Third home run of the season, and they add to the lead. It's 3-0. That one just sounded different. And might have been the loudest moment yet. Man, my ears are ringing. I can feel that swing from the booth. Back-to-back -back homers, always a special feeling at the ballpark, especially if it's your team that does it and those guys get to slap hands at home plate. This is the kind of thing that can really fire up the ball club. Kevin Biggio with a chance to hit. Batting and he deals. The designated hitter, Kevin Biggio. Up the middle, Connor Falefa gloves it. Throw on to Rizzo. They get him, but it was pretty close. Got it, huh? The second baseman, Santiago Espino. Santiago Espino now at the plate. The wind and the pitch. Yeah. Check swing, but he went too far. Going one. And now the count is even. Next pitch misses outside. Now two balls and a strike. Two down, nobody on. That just misses. Three and one. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with the 3-1 count. And now a full count. Well, triple digits on the gun. I know there are more guys that can reach that now than in the past, but it's still impressive to watch. The 3-2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. It's been a little bit of a shaky inning, but he's still in a good spot to get out of this thing without giving up any more runs. He's just got to turn the page and go after this next guy. The pitch. Guerrero batting now for the second time as he takes inside. Espinal off of first with two away. Next offering is in for a strike. He doesn't get a knock right here. That pitch he just took is going to eat at him for a while. You might not see another pitch like that from a top level guy like this. Righty to the plate. And a foul ball. The pitch. Good eye right there. That's where you want it. It's a good miss. Out to short. Connor Falefa throws the first in time. And Guerrero is set down. And that's the third out. Back at Yankee Stadium, bottom of the inning, and now Kyle Higashioka. And Chris, his big strength is defense, but it is interesting. In today's world of baseball, compared to when you played, a good defensive catcher is considered differently. Whatever you get offensively is a bonus, but he's got to put the fingers down. He's got to present pitches to the umpire. They're going to help his pitcher get more strikes.
A 3-0 lead is great, but you can't get too comfortable. Got to stay aggressive, keep attacking hitters, try to cruise through this ball game. The 0-1. That's down and in. I think the other component is putting down the finger that the pitcher wants to throw and being on the same page. And that's something that this guy does really well. Gets in sync with his pitchers. Ball, the next back. offering misses. Ball two. On the ground the first. He'll do it himself. One up, one down. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Isaiah Kiner Falefa up to the plate. Here comes a pitch. Just missed. And the 1 0. That's a strike. So a foul ball makes it one and two. One down, base is empty. Out towards right center field. And it drops in, but a good job to keep it in front. Batting it, the center fielder, Aaron. Now here's Aaron Hicks. Now these guys definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. Gosman throws over. No, Connor saying. Falefa dives back in. Another throw over. Yeah, they're keeping him close. And a pitch. That one misses, and it's one to no. The one oh. And there's the strike. Next pitch is outside. Ball Next three. one misses, and a count is three and one. And the three one. Swing and a miss. Now three and two. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. And there are two outs. That's about as nasty of a splitter as you'll come across, especially in terms of Batting movement. Gun. I mean, that thing tumbles no, out of his hand hitter. and just drops off Joey. the table at the last moment. Yellow. He keeps it down. It's just so tough to put wood on. Joey Gallo stepping in now for the Yankees. This guy has turned into a beast. The pitch. And that's in there at the knees. Now the 0-1. That pitch in for a strike, and it's 0-2. Perhaps not quite ready to hit. First two pitches by him for a couple of strikes. Now back is against the wall. He's going to have to figure something out and figure it out quickly.
Nope. Next pitch ball misses. Ball. Now one and two. One ball, two strikes. Down. Gosman throws over. Connor Falefa gets back easily. Kicks and fires. Got him. And that is that. One left for the Yankees. They trail it here, three nothing. New inning getting started. Bull Bichette up to the dish. When he steps into the batter's box, the comfort level looks so high. It doesn't matter what kind of delivery that pitcher has, what kind of velocity, what kind of secondary stuff. He is so settled in there, he owns the home plate area. And he's down 0 2 as he swings through it. Charlie's back out here for the third, and after the first couple of innings, pretty rough. I think the skipper's looking for him to give him a little bit of length, see if he can save the bullpen cell. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So, right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. The wind of the pitch. That's a ball. And another ball. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with three hole hitter coming up if he's walked. And the right hander deals. And there's ball four. Oh, looking for a swing and miss right there or for the ump to help him out and make a call with that last pitch, but neither happened. Close pitch, but a good Matt take to earn that walk. Chapman. Now Matt Chapman at the plate. And the pitch. Nope. Ball That's one, ball. no strikes. At the belt and fires. Matt Chapman, big blast. Left field. He can't get there, and that should be extra bases. Here comes the runner. He'll score, and they lead by four. These guys today are so great with handling velocity. Okay. They're seeing high speeds day after day, and a nice job of turning that one around. So, man aboard. Here's Lourdes Gurriel Jr. And a pitch. There's a strike. Saying four homers in 22 games at Old Yankee Stadium. What do you remember? Well, I remember my rookie year hitting two in one game. And, you know, before that game in the clubhouse, there was a gentleman there who owned a suit company there in downtown Manhattan. And he said to me, hey, kid, you hit a home run in the game tonight. Come over to the store tomorrow and I'll give you a free suit. Chapman at second with nobody out. Slice down the right side. So I went into the game. I happened to hit two when I walked into the store the next day and he looked at me and said, you're trying to put me out of business, aren't you? And that was a <laughs> great, great experience that I had as a rookie playing against the Yankees playing in New York. Swing and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. Now and now right Teoscar Hernandez. Teoscar Hernandez. So did Super Joe give you two suits? Super Joe hooked me up with two suits. And here it comes. That's in for a strike. Runner leads away at second. Swing and a miss. And the count is 0 and 2. One out and a runner at second. Next pitch is outside. Now one and two. Hey. 
Got him swinging. And he's down on strikes for the second time today. And it'll be George Springer to step to the plate. It's been such a good hitter with runners in scoring position. Some guys just take it to another level. For him right now at the plate, it's like everyone else is in slow motion and he's in full speed. First offering misses the mark. Good purpose pitch right there. Trying to tease him, get him to raise his sights, pop something up, and make it an easy out. Next offering is in for a strike. Two outs and one in scoring position. Swing and a miss. And a count one and two. Next offering way off the plate. Next one misses, ball three. And down on strikes he goes. Good job of damage control right there. So a run on one hit, no errors, and a man left. We head down to the home half of inning number three. It's the Blue Jays four and the Yankees nothing. Back at Yankee Stadium, now it's the right fielder, Aaron Judge. He's a guy who does it all. With the lack of contact in today's game, this guy hits for contact, so he delivers average, but there's on base and slugging, too. And a pitch. Early in the count, you have to be real careful because of that power. But then if this hitter gets a strike or two on him, he's still very comfortable. And because he has the ability to get the barrel to the baseball, he's a threat deep into the count as well. Next offering misses. Two balls, no strikes. Next one off the plate inside. And that's ball three. Here's a 3-0. And he walked it. Looked like a questionable call in that spot. He even seemed a little surprised it went his way at the plate. But as a hitter, you'll take that all day. The right hitter back to work. If you're going to get something going, this is the time to do it. You get the leadoff man on. Everybody's got to look over the shoulder and say, I'm just going to keep the line moving. Don't try to do too much. And a foul ball. These guys like this that have so much power, look forward to seeing them hit the ball a long way. But if you're in the stands, or you're in a broadcast booth, or you're a writer, better keep your eye on the game. Next pitch is inside. Ball one. They've got a potent lineup. And when you think about teams capable of rallying from this kind of deficit, they're right at the top of the list. The next pitch misses. Two and two. Runner at first with no outs here. Stays alive. And a swing and a miss. Now one away. Here at New Yankee Stadium in the Bronx and they have this new ballpark that is absolutely gorgeous, but there's still some of that old school feel to it. The pitch. Donaldson takes a strike there as he stands at the plate now. Oh. 
Oh, Next one. pitch downstairs, and that's ball one. Yeah, you have to connect the past with the present, and they did a really nice job of the Monument Park out there where you can go and walk through and see the legends. This is New York. It is the greatest city, I would say, in the country, if not the world. So you expect them to build a ballpark that's going to be incredibly rich in that tradition. The punch out there, back-to-back -back strikeouts. I'm not sure that was the exact location the pitcher wanted, but it worked. He got the swing the and miss, and the second I'm baseman. sure a bit of sigh of relief DJ. after seeing that one go through the zone. Love Mayhew. And at first, and now it's DJ LeMayhew digging in. The pitch. There's a strike. What about as a left-handed hitter and how short that porch is in right field? Were you ever tempted to just try and think in terms of leaning on something as a left-handed hitter and just trying to yank it over the right field wall? I don't think I needed to be tempted to do that. I think that's all I was you know, trying to do because I didn't have a whole lot of power. pitch and there's a foul ball and the 2 comes up empty as he chases that one in the dirt fires over to Guerrero inning over the Yanks lead one they're on the short end of a four nothing score Back in the Bronx, John Chomby with Chris Singleton and set to lead off the fourth, Danny Jansen. The catcher, number nine, Danny Jansen. The right-hander back to work. And a good fastball to start him off. That's strike one. Kicks and deals. And it's fouled away. The why to kick the pitch. And a foul ball, he stays alive. The wind of the pitch. Stays alive. Next offering down in the dirt. Two balls. And the next pitch is way outside. Foul ball. Swing and a miss, and he got him. Picks up strikeout number seven. Kevin Biggio up to the plate. He's old for one. Kevin Biggio. For you growing up in New York City. I mean, you're a big sports fan. Tell me about your experience with the Yankees growing up. I really went to Shea Stadium more than I did to Yankee Stadium. I grew up a Phillies fan. There was one game, though, that I went to as a kid. I sat in the upper deck 
It was the game that Bo Jackson hit three homers in his first three plate appearances and then hurt his shoulder diving for Deion Sanders inside the park home run. That's probably the most memorable game that I ever attended as a fan at Old Yankee Stadium. That one in for a strike, two and two. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Two gone now. Well, right now, he's in cruise control, autopilot, just dominating these hitters. It doesn't look like it's a fun at bat. And all of a sudden, you become in awe of this guy on the mound. Somebody's got to break this thing up. That's five straight strikeouts. Got to put a ball in play. So up next, Santiago Espinal. Cole, back to work. Ground ball right side. Rizzo takes it himself, third out. To the bottom of inning number four now. It's the Blue Jays four and the Yankees nothing. Bottom of the fourth. Now it's going to be Anthony Rizzo. The, the Yankees, Yankees in striking the distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the late off, man. I need a good at bat out of him right here. The Yankees looking to rally. The pitch. And first offering is fouled off. That fastball at the bottom of the zone can be very effective. Just got to keep it on the corners. The 0 1. And no, ball sorry, one. Go. That's to third. Slings it across. Yeah. One out in the bottom of the fourth. Now batting. Catcher. Kyle. Higashioka. And up next for New York. Kyle Higashioka. Grounded out his first time. This guy one of the best defensive catchers going. You talk about framing. The ability to block. Catch and throw. He is at the top of the game. The pitch. That's in there. That's strike one really good athlete and many times we talk about you know the feet of infielders this catcher as well really quick feet he's able to recognize the pitch see the trajectory and get into a spot where he can block those balls and keep them from going to the backstop Guriel handles the chance and there's two down now batting shortstop Isaiah Kiner Vallejo. two outs base is empty and the batter will be the shortstop, Isaiah Kiner Falefa. And he's already singled in this game. And a pitch. Breaking ball through there for a strike. Next pitch misses. One and one. Here's a one one. Pulls that one foul. Righty delivers. Yeah, the one two misses to even the count. Now all even up. That one pushed foul. The two two. Foul ball. Good battle here. About to be the eighth pitch of the at bat. The other way. 
Makes the grab, and that's the inning. Yanks held in check. They trail it here for nothing. And welcome back. All set for the start of the inning. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. now. With this kind of lead, he can swing freely. Vladimir. Try to hit the ball out of the park. Do what he loves to do. The wind and the pitch. And that one a little bit high. Activity in the bullpen for the Yankees. Clark Schmidt getting ready to go. Number 14 getting loose as well. Swing and a miss. Oh, there's a pitch we haven't seen in a while. It's going to be tough on the hitters if he can mix that in whenever he wants. The next offering misses. And it's 2-1. and one. The 2-1. That one missing inside. And a 3-1 on the way. Foul off down the right side. Righty to the plate. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. What a battle. It's not always easy laying off a 3-2 pitch. And I tell you what, he earned that walk. There comes the skipper out of the dugout, and he's ready to make the move. Garrett Cole is done in this one. And as he heads for the dugout, we'll take a quick break. New arm on the mound when we get back. Boog, do you think you could draw a walk in the bigs if we gave you enough at bats? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that if they gave the pitcher a false scouting report on me, yes, I think I could draw a walk. New pitcher for the Yankees, Clark Schmidt. And this is his season debut. Next to hit, Bo Bichette. He's already homered in this game. And a pitch. Off the mark there. 1 and 0. Oh. Schmidt, he's known at least in part for his changeup, and it's not just about changing speeds. He gets some serious movement. In the dirt, but kept close. No advance. Good job behind the dish. And that's in for a strike. And that movement is, I mean, really what makes the difference because a hitter can know that the changeup is coming and try to time up his rhythm to connect. But when it has that late movement, you miss the bat or maybe you get it off the end. And the righty deals. And it's even up. Two and two. That one is upstairs. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And there's one away. That's a pretty nasty pitch right there. I'd call it a power curveball in the 80s. It's got so much spin on it, and you really don't have a lot of time to sit back and watch what it's going to do before you have to commit. It was a good one for the swinging strikeout. Matt Chapman up to the plate now. And when you talk about elite defensive third baseman, this guy is at the top of the list. Stud. When you look at players like this, you play that hot corner. Got to be pretty courageous over there with the way balls come off the bat. That's the kind of guy that every year you expect him to be in the all-star. takes off. Swing and a miss. The tag, and he's out at second. Well, the throw bounced in there perfectly. Really nice job on the back. Pick it, apply that tag, hold it on him. Just didn't get a good jump over there at first base. That's half the battle of stealing bases, maybe even more. Next 
offering is in for a strike. So what are the skills you look for that make a really good defensive third baseman that elite? Oh, but one of the things I think about immediately are just the feet. Does he have good feet? Is he able to quickly react? And when you have good feet, you've got soft hands. And soft hand defenders are able to make tough plays look easy. Well, he might have to look for a different put-away pitch right here, 2-2. He's already seen the curveball a couple of times in this at-bat, so might have it timed up and ready for it. There's a swing and a drive, and that one is going to go. Matt Chapman pops one out of here, and they add on. It's 5-zip. A breaking ball on the inside part of the plate requires a hitter to stay really square with his mechanics. If you fly open with the front shoulder, there's no way you keep that ball fair. An outstanding job mechanically. He deserves that home run. And it's Lourdes Goriel Jr. The batter, the left fielder. Lourdes. And that's in there for strike one. That one misses, and a count one and two. Swing and a miss, and he is down on strikes for the third straight at bat. Toronto extends the lead on the solo shot, and the lead is now 5-0. Welcome back. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Aaron Hicks at the plate. Leading off for the Yankees. The center fielder, Aaron Hicks. And he deals. Now one oh. miss. Left-hand batter waits, and there's the strike. Hey. Next offering is in for a strike. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And the leadoff man set down in their half of the fifth. Well, that splitter out of the hand, now, it just sort of jumps on you, and your interpretation Joey. is here comes a fastball Yellow. again. Well, it never really reaches because the bottom falls out of it, and you swing over the top, and that's why they call it a split-finger fastball because it looks like a four-seamer. Here's Joey Gallo. And here it comes. That one finds the zone. It's 0-1. And the 01. Got it started a little too early. Strike one. Right hander kicks deals. And a foul ball. He stays alive. The 0 2. And now 1 and 2. Caught a break right there. Pretty good pitch on the outside corner. Next one misses. It's 2 and 2. Kicks and fires. On the ground, right side. And that's just foul. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Home half of the fifth inning moving along. Two quick outs. 
Well, you always want those pitches Up back as a hitter. Game. It caught a lot of the, the zone right and definitely not Aaron. the intended location. But Judge. those splitters can dance around and miss a barrel even when they're not perfectly executed. It's Aaron Judge now. The pitch. They say you win. All ones the count. And it's one and one. Oh, he's got to be pretty proud of this outing so far. Sometimes guys cower coming into a ballpark like this, but he is attacked hitters. Pitching on the road like this is very impressive. This has been a treat to watch. Next pitch oh, off the play, and a count two and one. Two and one on Judge. And that one off the outside edge. Just one out away. Try to close it out. That's through there for a strike. Looking sharp just to strike away from five shutout innings. In the air, right field. And that should be extra bases. Around first, heading for two. In safely. It's a double and his second hit. Anything but pretty right there, okay. but he'll take it no every time. Just squibbed it the oh, other no. way and beat the shift. I'm that's not sure that's exactly what he was trying to do, but it'll work almost every time with the defense shifted to the pull side. And you can feel this crowd waking up a bit here as the guys are starting to make some noise with their bats. And now here is Giancarlo Stanton. Good power, not great in the OBP department. Out front and foul to the left side. And that one is lifted in the air. And he's got it, ball game. And the Blue Jays get a shutout on the mound. These guys had the long ball working for them today. Four home runs had a lot to do with them coming out on top. Five nothing the final in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon.